to it. Um, we're going to stay in C major for most of the night because it's easy to see everything. Um, it's easy for you to play along too, even for fairly newer pianos, uh, pianists. <laughs> um, so really all you need to know is a few chords and obviously the note names. So um, we're going to stay in C major, like I said. Um, and in jazz, usually we're going to, I know most people are used to hearing that C chord as their one chord and their home chord, but in jazz we make the C major 7. We add that B up there um, so that uh, so that's our home base, so to speak, is the one chord, right? So now, let's talk about the two chord. The most common progression in jazz, like I swear it's all over the place. That's all, if you read a new jazz song, it's just like two five in this key, two five in this key, two five, two five. Um, so we're gonna talk about ways to play two five one um, and how to mechanically voice them so that you don't really have to think about it. So the first one is root position, right? So we have D, F, A, and C, right? It's so weird, I'm not used to looking at a different screen and seeing what I'm playing. Um, so that's our two chord, right? And then to get to our five chord, the G chord, all you're gonna do is move this C down to a G. Um, your pinky down to a G. Now that's a five chord, right? That's a G7, but it's actually a G7 with a nine in there, the A, right? But you didn't even think about that. You just moved your pinky down, but you have this nice jazz voicing. That's the point of this. And then resolve it to your one seven, right? So that's the point of these things, is you literally just move your pinky, and in your head you realize you move from the 2 to the 5 chord, and bam, you're good. So let's try that again. So you got D, F, A, and C, that's your 2 chord, right? And then we move the pinky down 1, and the bass to a G, that's our 5 chord, and then back to the 1, C, major 7, bam. It's that easy, guys. So you put a little rhythm, a little bossa nova. right um, well that's the basics right so let's talk about how to get some different sounds and some different voicings um, that was root position right so I hope if you're with me at this point and you're stuck to this point you know what an inversion is right so if you don't um, and you're just a magical person that plays by ear an inversion is when you take a note you rearrange a chord basically so we're gonna take this D uh, well no we're not gonna that's how you do a basic inversion never mind Second inversion, we're going to call it a D minor 9 now, right? So you still have the D in the bass. And that's a D minor 9. D, F, A, I'm sorry, D, F, A, C, and E. Except you only play the F, A, C, and E in your right hand, right? So, and then the C still goes down to that B, right? That's how the 5 changes, to, or the 2 changes to the 5, right? But now you have a really, really cool chord built in. That's a G13-9, right? Or G9-13. You have the F, which is the 7 of the G chord. You have the, the A, which is the 2, the 3rd, and the 9, or the, or the 13, or the 6. And to resolve it, you resolve that to a C minor 9. Isn't that a nice resolution? So I'm just playing a C chord, right? But I'm starting on the 3rd, 5th. 7th and ninth, right? So I'm playing at E, G, B, or D. Some people like to think about what that chord is called. So that's an E minor 7. Some people like to say, yeah, uh, that's E minor 7 over C. And you'll see it written sometimes. I prefer to call that C9 um, or C major 9. But anyways, I digress. So back to the 2 chord, right? The 2, 9, right? D, F, A, C, E. Move that C down to the B for your five chord, and then move everything else down. So when I move this, this is a hard motion. I think about this middle finger, the B, being anchored and moving everything else down around to resolve to that C, right? Let's do that one more time. That's your D minor nine. Move the C down to the B, and then move everything else down. Two, five, one, second inversion, right? That one's really, really pretty. Um, one second, I'm going to turn. I can't see the comments on this new app, so I'm going to turn it on so I can see if anybody's commenting. Uh, not yet. All right, cool. So, let's keep moving. We did first position, right? Root position. We did second position, or first inversion. You hear the difference, right? They sound a little different. Third inversion. We're going to do this. So we start on the fifth of the chord. So we're doing the five, seven, one, 
and three of the chord, right? It's still a D minor chord, but it's just rearranged. And you get that little crunch in the middle, putting the seventh next to the, to the one. And then, what do you do? Same thing. The B goes to the C. And now we just have a G9 um, rearranged up here. Kind of pretty sound, and then bring everything else down. So now you have the crunchy C major seven resolution, right? With that B and C right in there. Cool. Try that again. Right, A, C, D, and F in your right hand to G. You have A, B, D, and F, and then resolve to G, B, C, and E. Right? Make sense? Uh, and then the last one we're going to do is the third inversion, starting with the seventh. Right? So that's going to be your right hand, C, D, F, and A. But still a D minor seven chord, right? And you still move that C, the seventh of the chord, down to become the third of the chord. And now it's a G9, right? And we resolve down to that one, or you can do an A. You can do a C or an A. Um, the big difference, this is a common thing, um, and I remember when I was in school, I learned about this, like, um, it's all, the difference between a major seven and a major six is all about where the melody is. Um, and what, what sound you want. Um, so if your melody lands on, uh, if your melody says, if your melody lands on the third, that's okay But you, to use a seven, but you don't want to use a seventh chord when you have a melody on the, on the uh, one. So if it sounds like this, you're on the two chord. Weird. You got a crunch at the top, right? Um, so in that case, you use a six chord, right? See how much more clear it sounds when you use a six chord instead of a seven chord, right? Um, so that's the idea. Cool. Um, so those are all your inver those are four inversions of your two five one, um, right? You got part. Let's review them. Root position five one, right? First inversion. Oops, I did that wrong. C to the B, right? And then we got the next one. And then we got the last one. Cool? Does that make sense? And then what you're going to want to do is do these in different keys, right? So the next key to do them in is G, right? So we start with a G major, and then we move up to A, right? The same thing. The same pattern goes, right? You can even use the same fingering. To the sorry, A minor seven, the G goes down to the F sharp. That's your five chord, your D, and then you resolve to C major seven, right? So it works the same in every key. <laughs> right? Um, so next key up would be D major, right? So that's our one now. Two. goes down and one right so if you can do this in every single key you can read jazz music and jazz charts and and hear these chord progressions really really easily um, I want to leave you with one more thing this is something that a lot of people talk about um, especially if you're first getting into jazz people are just like I want to learn the tritone stuff man it's so cool it gets you that chromatic thing um, <laughs> which is true um, so I'll show it to you, um, but don't use this all the time. This is just like a little thing. You can use it when you're soloing. If you're playing with really, really experienced musicians, they'll kind of hear you do it on the spot and play it with you. Um, so a tritone substitution is, let's say it's a two, five, one. You're substituting the five chord for the flat two chord, if you want to be technical. So you have your two chord, right? And instead of playing the G chord, you're going to play a D flat chord. And resolve to C. Right? I'll do that one more time. D minor, basically, to D flat seven to C major seven, right? Um, so what you're doing there is you have the two chord, right? Now let's look at the five chord. I'm just gonna put it in root position here, right? So the most important notes in this are the B and the F, right? You can do it without the D. It still sounds like the same chord, right? So the 
every chord, if you go a tritone away, which is a certain interval, right, G to D flat, if you notice, the, D, the B and the F are still the third and the seventh, they just flipped, right? So that's why it works. They still function, the third and seventh still function the same and can give us that resolution. That's a tritone sub. Um, so if you kind of do your two five, you get comfortable with those, then start learning those in every key too, so you're comfortable and you can just kind of throw that throw that in um, whenever you feel like it. Cool. Um, so hit me up, uh, shoot me a message if you have any com questions about anything you saw. Um, yeah, and check out our classes online. Um, they should be a lot of fun, and we're gonna do a lot of random little subjects like this: DJ, music production, video production, jazz piano. So um, yeah, stay tuned. Thanks, guys.